There you are. May I assume you've had your fill of rest? That is well. Now that we are all present, let us speak of our plan. Thus far, we have vanquished four light lords, restoring night to much of Norvrand. Only one remains, that of Colusia. And with Reen to guide us, I am certain we will find it. We're so close now. If we can just take care of this one last warden, we'll rob the Sin Eaters of their final foothold and drive them out of Norvrant once and for all. It will be a new beginning for the first, a chance for the people to rebuild their world. In short, a prize worth fighting for. And in thus delivering the first from destruction, so too shall we unsow the seeds of the eighth umbral calamity. Do you hear? Your dreams of rejoining is in jeopardy. Are you sure you're not tempted to intervene? <sighs> you labor under the misapprehension that vanquishing the Sin Eaters is tantamount to saving the world. It is not. In truth, you only delay the inevitable, lengthening your fleeting lives by the smallest of margins. It would be churlish of me to deny you this small concession, close as we've become. Foolish and misguided though you are, you are not without charm. Each and every one of you is possessed of a noble heart. When the weak want for succor, you do not hesitate to provide it. Alas, your nobility is short-sighted. You think only of the problem in front of your nose. A limitation of your ephemeral existence. Our lives may seem short and insignificant to the likes of you, but one does not need to be an eternal being to achieve lasting change. Uh, if I may stop you there, I do not claim that we Asians are special. That is another misconception. In the beginning, everyone, everyone lived nigh for eternity. Such was the natural order of things. But like so much else, this was taken from you. You won't object if I borrow your plaything. In the distant past, when the world was one and whole, a great calamity threatened all life. It began without warning. The very laws of the star were warped and broken, and chaos swiftly spread throughout the land. Faced with annihilation, we sought to imbue the star with its own will. Thus was Zodiac born and by his power was order restored. Ere long, however, thankless fools began to fear that Zodiac's might was too great, and so they conjured another to keep him in check, your own dear Hyde. And the two beings waged war until, with a single devastating blow, Hydaelyn unmade Zodiac, scattering his being across space and time. So you told us in the Katana Ravel. Yes, yes. And there began our woes, with Hydaelyn's blow and all that it wrought. As a counterbalance to Zodiac, Hydaelyn was created with the power to enervate her foe. This singular ability strikes not at such banal things as flesh, but everything that defines the target, diluting its existence. For example, were she to strike you? Two 
being individuals, identical in appearance yet reduced in all respects, strength, intelligence, the soul itself, all is halved. Do you see? This self-same fate befell not only Zodiac, but the very star. Only three were fortunate enough to escape the sundering, me being one of them. When I beheld the shattered remnants of our home, I knew deepest despair. The inhabitants of these fourteen fragments were feeble, frail and foolish oblivious to their imperfection, ignorant of their past. Malformed creatures thrashing blindly about, pitiful, disturbing, depressing. So, we took it upon ourselves to rejoin the worlds. But in our eagerness and, I confess, our ignorance, we erred and made a useless void of the 13th. It was only afterwards that we discovered a connection twixt source and shard, a flow of energy that maintains elemental balance. And thus did we arrive at our time-honored modus operandi. From a Asian standpoint, it could be said that what you seek to do is only logical. But that would be to ignore the immeasurable destruction wrought with each rejoining. You have murdered millions, and this we cannot condone. By your fragmented existence, you continue to give rise to tragedies far crueler than any calamity. But yes, moral relativism and all that. Case in point, I do not consider you to be truly alive, ergo, I will not be guilty of murder if I kill you. Oh, don't look at me like that. You, for whom I have only the highest expectations. A vaunted hero of the source, seven times rejoined. Long have I awaited one who might brave a path of lesser tragedy. A resilient soul able to endure the necessary pain. I dare to hope that my wait is over. So, finish your task and slay the Light Warden. Make proof of your usefulness, and then we may speak again. Forgive me, my lord, but this could not wait. Speak freely, Captain. Our informant in Colusia sends word of unusual activity in Yulmur. It appears their forces are entrenching themselves at key points throughout the city, making ready for an attack by all indications. An intriguing use of resources. I rather doubt Lord Valthry's concern for the safety of his citizens. You think he's harboring the Light Warden inside the city walls? Even if he does have some means of controlling the Sin Eaters, wouldn't that be a little risky? Risky or not, if there is even a chance the Warden is hiding there, we will need to act fast. The longer we wait, the better prepared the Yule Warrens will be. Agreed. See to your preparations then and make for Calusia. God's willing. This hunt will be the last. Let us see it through to the end.
we should begin by assembling in right. There we may assess the situation in Yulmore and decide how best to proceed.